get the 2023 Clownfish comic books, including Crimson Wren Volume 1 and previously on Clownfish TV. We're offering a limited number of these books. In our second chance offer, go to shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. Geeky Sparkles is, is sitting this video out. She's out and about today, but uh, this is something we're going to talk about throughout the week and then it got kind of pushed back. It's not really super time sensitive, but we're going to do a follow up on the situation in Hollywood that uh, uh, people are just realizing that the diversity and inclusion initiatives in Hollywood and so many other places over the last couple of years were just PR stunts or it was a way to get venture capital because a lot of uh, uh, venture capitalists uh, prefer that you have a, a strong DEI program. But now that the money has run out, that the money has run out from venture capital investment firms and the money has run out from the productions themselves and the chips are down in Hollywood, now that the chips are down, they're tossing people overboard and there are certain kinds of people that are getting tossed overboard. Now, I don't think it's black people. I don't think it's queer people. Uh, I don't think that's what's going on. I think what Hollywood is doing is purging itself of activists, purging itself of made up positions that they only did for optics because that's what was trendy. And it has had a detrimental effect on the bottom line because they've let these DEI consultants overstep their jurisdiction. And a lot of them have meddled in the production, I believe, the productions of different shows and movies and video games and whatever else. And it has come uh, with a high price tag for the studios. We've seen flop after flop, bomb after bomb, shows getting canceled, shows getting panned, uh, people not turning up in theaters, you know, because it's obvious, it's very obvious when somebody watches a trailer or sees a preview for something that like, oh, okay, this is the ratio. They had to make sure they had one of every kind of person, even though it doesn't make sense. It's like the 1600s or 1700s and, and you have like an outspoken black lesbian in a wheelchair, uh, you know, as the head of a country or something in Europe. You know, it's like, wait a minute. That's, this is not actually how it was. Like, hey, I, history has its problems for sure. But we don't have to sanitize or change historical depictions until we do because of the uh, DEI executives. We've seen how DEI has ruined tabletop gaming. Orcs are racist. Drow are racist. You know, uh, you don't like a monster in a game. Just don't use the monster in your game. We've seen how they've ruined video games. You know, we've got uh, video games that are more focused on skin tone and uh, the size or shape of your genitals than the, you know, the actual gameplay. Like, look at look at all the customization you can do so everybody can feel represented. And you see this. You see it. You see the DEI in action. You see when they lead with how diverse and inclusive something is over, is the story good or the actors good? Now, this is in stark contrast. Like, I'm thinking about the Haunted Mansion movie, which is one of the few Disney movies I actually want to see. We're actually going to go see it next week. Um and yeah, it's, it's a predominantly black cast, but I don't think they've led with that. I really don't think they've led with it. You know, uh, the, the other Haunted Mansion movie, the Eddie Murphy one, same thing. It was predominantly uh, a black cast. I don't think anybody really cared. But uh, no, they're leading with, hey, look, it looks actually looks like the Haunted Mansion. It looks funny and spooky. And uh, please come see our movie, you know, versus like... You better come see this movie because if you don't see this Haunted Mansion movie, you're definitely a bigot because that'll be two for two, you know. Uh, so, but it's it's over. This is it's ending. You know, all of this is ending and it's ending in tears for the studios because now they have to pick up the pieces of mistakes they've been making for the last five or six years. And again, I'm not talking about, you know whitewashing Hollywood and rolling the clock back to 1950 where everything's, you know, no, I'm saying organic diversity, just make good stuff, cast the right people. You know, if you want to make a movie that appeals to a certain demographic, that's fine. But we've seen shows get shot down. ABC, Disney, they were shooting 
pilots down for series because the the cast wasn't diverse enough. Like we've seen some excellent shows and we think the show would be amazing, but the cast wasn't diverse enough. So by that criteria, uh, perennial favorites like Seinfeld and Friends would never get made today, you know, because they weren't diverse enough. And that's that's actually become the butt of a joke, uh, you know, in the case of Friends, right? Uh, the case of Friends, they had Friends coffee creamer and I actually bought it because I'm like, what the hell does Friends taste like? And I was thinking the tagline for this should have been like, when your coffee is just too black, uh, buy Friends coffee creamer, <laughs> you know, but I digress. Um, so it's ending. So we're going to talk about it. Everybody's uh, hand wringing right now. This is coming from the LA Times. We got uh, Rolling Stone. Everybody's so worked up about this that uh, these DEI executives who didn't exist back in the 70s and 80s, by the way, and the 90s, uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s, when we had lots of sitcoms that were on uh, network TV with, with diverse audiences, diverse leads, and people watch them. Cosby Show was one of the most popular shows on TV. Fresh Prince was one of the most popular shows. Jefferson's, um, you know, and I'm not saying there can't be more. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, you know, what I'm saying is when it's forced, forced diversity, forced diversity is ending because it wasn't profitable. Let me just restate that. Forced, forced diversity programs are ending because they are not profitable for the companies. If the company doesn't make money, guess what? Nobody gets a TV show. Nobody gets a deal. Nobody gets a, a game or a, whatever. There's none of it because there's no fucking money because you've driven audiences away by being heavy handed and preaching to them. You're better off just doing it, putting it out there and seeing how it goes. You know, that's, that's call me crazy. Call me crazy. And I'm sure I am. I'm sure I am. But whatever. Anyway, LA Times. High profile exits spark fear that Hollywood diversity pledges are just PR. Oh, they were. They were. Her message was cheerful and comforting. People, I got you. Last fall, veteran Hollywood diversity executive Karen Horn sought to reassure aspiring artists who were shaken by the elimination of the Warner Brothers Television Workshop, for which decades stood as a beacon for the development of emerging talent of color. Facing a torrent of outrage, Warner Brothers vowed to revive the program. Horn's celebration was short-lived last month she was laid off. Last month she was laid off, becoming the fourth high-level diversity, equity, and inclusion exec in Hollywood to leave during a 10-day stretch. And during Pride Month, Pride Month, Hollywood, come on. No, this is Hollywood sending a signal. I'm telling you what they're doing. And I think the strikes might even have something to do with it because one of the demands of the writer strikes uh, was that you had to have certain, uh, number of a certain number of people in the writer's room, certain background, certain ethnicity, certain sexual identity. And Hollywood's like, we can't fucking afford it. We put the people in that are right for the job. And that's that's it, guys. Um, so diversity chiefs at Walt Disney Company, Netflix, and the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, all black women also resigned or were forced out of their jobs. Startling string of exits comes in the midst of attacks by conservative politicians and pundits on wokeness and entertainment, education, and other areas of American life. Now, this is about the bottom line. Trust me, I'm sure there are plenty of uh, woke people in Hollywood. Pundits on wokeness. Pundits on wokeness. Uh, there are some people who who I think take it too far and are like, gosh, we need to roll it back like way back to the 50s, right? That's that's not what's going on here, right? But what is actually going on, because there are plenty of woke people in Hollywood. There are plenty of quote unquote woke people in Hollywood, and they probably sympathize to some level, but I think they're also business people and they're like, we are bleeding out money. We are race swapping for no reason. We are uh, adding, uh, you know, making casting choices and script choices, and whatever, based on DEI first and not story. We're, we're passing on shows that don't meet the criteria of DEI and we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Like, what the hell are we doing here? And here we are. Here we are. Guys. Now, now the strikes are happening. And people are like, now they want more. Now they want like 20 people in the writer's room and they have to all be of a certain, uh, you know, identity, which is not financially sustainable. So this in a roundabout way, this pledge to DEI chasing that, that chuck wagon, the venture capital, all that has actually led to the ruination in some level of Hollywood. 
You know, I mean, it can be argued, pretty, I think, pretty successfully that people are getting tired of a lot of the shit coming out of Hollywood right now. And they're getting tired of the grandstanding and they're getting tired of being preached at, even if they agree. Even if they agree, they're getting tired of being preached at. You know, I, I mean, I know Christians that uh, roll their eyes whenever somebody does some flowery public prayer. They're like, oh, my God, you know, in the Bible, Jesus said, go to your closet, do it in private. We don't need need the, the, the grandstanding. And it actually doesn't help people in those groups in a lot of ways because you turn public opinion against them. They're like, oh, you're one of those people. Okay, so yeah, you, it's like, come on. So it, it, this is purely financial, purely financial. For many, the Hollywood departures were unnerving. I wake up every day trying not to be a cynic, but it's frightening, said the executive director at the NAACP for, uh, Hollywood Bureau. Hollywood seems to be sending a message that these programs were designed to give more access to African Americans and are no longer needed. Hollywood is sending a message that they want to return to profitability. And some of the movies will probably have African-Americans in them. They'll probably be led by, directed by, starring. You know, that's an issue that I can't speak to, obviously. But I'm telling you, just looking at it from the outside and looking at the financials, and we've been covering this shit for five years now, right? It is not viable. When you pivot, every when everything hinges on your DEI. Look at Disney. They started, they, they fired their diversity uh, gal and she, I forget her name off the top of my head, but she came in in 2017 and that's when all the weird shit started at Disney. That's when all of a sudden Pirates of the Caribbean had to be more politically correct. All of our historical based attractions, we had to audit them to make sure that they were politically correct. And, you know, we had to take boys and girls out of the fireworks show announcement to be politically correct. And now we have a dude with a mustache working at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's, like it's been a slippery slope. And a lot of the general public is looking at this like, what the hell's going on? At first it was subtle. At first it was subtle. And now it is not subtle. Now it's in your face every day. And you don't even look at a piece of entertainment anymore without noticing it. You can't not see it. I mean. Uh, my wife and daughter did a review of the Barbie movie yesterday, and my daughter is pretty progressive, you know, and she's even like, yeah, it was very obviously anti-man. Like the movie was very anti-man. She was not coached in any way by my wife. They basically looked at each other after the fact. They're like, what the hell did we watch? And I just wanted a fun Barbie movie. And the first half was fun. And the rest of it was just constantly uh, dragging men. You know, and and uh, it's it's so obvious now. People are tired of it, and it's hurting the bottom line. People want to be entertained, and yeah, you can get your opinions in there. You can get your hot takes in there. You can make diverse movies for diverse audiences. There's nothing wrong with that. But do you really need somebody appointed as the czar of diversity at every company? Well, I guess you do if you need to get that venture capital, and that's one of the things they're looking for. But now that that's run out, you don't need these people anymore. So yeah, it was all it was all for show. It was all for show. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but the people that make the biggest deal out of diversity and inclusion are usually fake as fuck. And it's usually white people. It's usually white people trotting out uh, their diversity and inclusion, uh, you know, initiatives or whatever to feel good about themselves. Uh, you know, and uh, here we got another article. This is uh, coming from Yahoo. Diversity fatigue. Diversity fatigue. Hollywood loses four DEI leaders in less than two weeks. They can't afford to go down this path anymore. And I said, look, Hollywood is going to revert to trying to be profitable again after seven or eight years of, of bloat. And, uh, you know, again, it was everybody was chasing streaming and everybody thought the money was never going to run out. And it is very clear looking at the box office. Looking at the box office returns this summer, which have been dismal. And for a lot of movies starring white guys, by the way, I want to point that out. A lot of movies starring white guys, the returns have been dismal. But some of them had overt messaging. I mean, people said Indiana Jones. It was the Phoebe Waller Bridge show, right? You know, so people are tired of it. Hollywood has to make money. And they can't make money if they're letting uh, everything be dictated by diversity and inclusion initiatives. It's basically at that point you're making propaganda. You know, 
You're making propaganda. You're like, here's the message. Let's make a show that contains the message rather than let's make a good show. And oh, by the way, this is what I want to talk about. It's mandated. It is mandated. You have to put the message into every fucking thing that we do. And then you're going to charge people for it. At least if somebody's going to give you propaganda, right? And they knock on your door and they give you religious propaganda or political propaganda. It's free. They just give it to you. Here's a booklet. You know, here I'm going to sit and talk to you about my beliefs. Hollywood, Hollywood gives you propaganda, but you still have to pay for it. And people have decided they don't want to pay for it anymore. They don't want to pay for the propaganda anymore. It's as simple as that. This is not hard to figure out. This isn't a woke versus unwoke thing. This isn't a political thing. Because there are a lot of people on the left who are getting sick of this shit too. They're like, why is, why can't I just sit down And watch a movie. Why does everything have to devolve into a monologue about this group or that group, whatever? Transformers, Earthspark, the new kids show. Kids show. Why are kids shows taking two or three minutes out of an episode to to lecture kids on gender identity in a cartoon about fucking robots that turn into cars and shit? You know, it's gotten really weird. It's gotten really weird and it's, it's ending And there will still be diverse shows. There will still be inclusive shows. I guarantee it because that is the makeup of the people that are making the shows. There will still be lots of shows with lots of left-wing talking points because, again, where these shows are made, it's going to happen because of the fact. It's always been that way. I mean, the shows come out of Hollywood. You know, publications come out of New York. Uh, comic books, you know, comic books didn't just like suddenly wake up one day and like, well, well, we're left wing now. No, comics always were kind of on the left because of where they were made. It just wasn't in your fucking face like it is now. Star Trek was always a pretty progressive show. It was actually one of the most progressive shows on TV, but it still knew it was entertainment first. You know, that's what I'm saying. This isn't a new thing. It's just like it's gotten so ridiculous in the last seven or eight years that it, it's you can't ignore it. And Hollywood knows. And they're just like, yeah, we're done. We're out. We're out. We're looking at what happened. Where did we go wrong? Where did we go wrong? Oh, when we, when we mandated DEI and we made sure that we only greenlit things that hit the criteria of these overpaid human resources people. And in a lot of cases, they're, they're merging this role back into human resources, which is where it belongs. It belongs in human resources, not necessarily, uh, not necessarily in the studio or green lighting shows, you know? And, uh, I think that that is a a huge change that with what's going on with the strikes, we're going to see a very, very different Hollywood after the fact, we're going to see a Hollywood that is going to try, I believe very hard to win back consumers trying to win back audiences. And it's going to take a couple of years to pivot. It is, but I think that they're, they have to, if they don't start making money on their own, because you know, those venture capitalists aren't going to keep doling it out. If they don't make money on their own, they're going to go out of fucking business. And this is the first step at trying to make money. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You feel the way that you feel right. But a lot of these positions were just made up to make people feel good. And for PR, that's exactly what it was. It was for PR. It was all for optics. It was to make people feel good and have bragging rights and to go to lenders and be like, look at how progressive and diverse we are. Give us money so we can make more shows about a certain marginalized group for you know 2% of the population, which is fine. But then you're going to get 2% of the revenue too. So you got to look at it that way. I don't know. There it is, guys. Hollywood is learning very slowly, very painfully. I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.